Okay, begin where we left off. We're on page 512 talking about expert systems. Now, expert systems were not designed to, to replace the human. They were designed to replace an experienced human with a less experienced human. Now, if you're a businessman, you probably know the less experienced junior employees are going to be paid less. So expert systems could save you some money. Okay, cool. All right. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is robotics. And I'm not sure what there is to say about robotics. I mean, yeah, the term's been around a while. Um, but the idea is, you guys know what this stuff is. They, they talk about... So let's just kind of cut to the chase and talk about, you know, industrial robots and things like that. But, you know, yeah, there's some personal robots. I mean, you know, a little Zumba, Roomba, you know, the little vacuum guy that comes around. That's a, kind of like a personal robot. Uh, we're not quite to the point where, you know, I can have, you know, someone come serve me a drink or something. But let's talk about where ro robot robotics really makes sense. Really it really makes sense in scenarios where our, the human can't go, okay? So I can't go into outer space. I can't go to the bottom of the ocean. I can't go to Mars, okay? I can't do that, but I can send a robot to do that. So robots are used not not to replace humans if the only reason, well, yeah, they're replacing humans, but only when the scenario exists where the humans just can't get there. Now, robotic surgery um, could be uh, a way that you could have a group of people uh, helping doctors all over the world doing complex uh, surgery. So you would not have to be an expert in something. So robots are kind of cool. But again, I think you guys already know about robots. So I'm going to skip over a bunch of this stuff. I mean, it's cute. Uh, but again, in, you, read, you read this part of the book, you're going to just kind of roll your heads and go, yeah, okay, I, I didn't learn anything. So moving on. Vision systems. So vision systems are all about, you know, 2D and 3D kind of recognition, pattern recognition, that kind of stuff. It could be something simple as a QR code. You guys have seen those guys before where, you know, you have a little two-dimensional barcode. You just zap it with your phone and it pops up an email or launches a website or does something. Okay. So that's a crude version of vision system. A better version of this is self-driving cars. So you, um, you know, you have a Google car that's uh, running down the road without a driver, uh, and they're, they're using lots of technologies. But the the major component of that is the vision system. So, you know, doing 3D models and facial recognition, and you know, pass facial recognition password for your for your iPad where you just point the camera at you and he goes, yep, that's you. Okay, that kind of stuff. That's vision system. Pretty cool. So deep face can correctly tell if two photos of the, are of the same person with 97% accuracy, which is pretty doggone close to what humans could do. So you've probably seen all the stuff on these like CSI kinds of television shows where, you know, they have a facial recognition and you see this little, little animation and it goes, bing. And they come up with a match. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So, moving on. Natural language processing and voice recognition. So, natural language processing is really all about can I read and understand the text? And so, the machine typically can scan and do like an optical character recognition, an OCR. Like, so if I want to scan like this web page and turn it into a uh, a Word document, it would scan all this text and put it into Word. But that's not exactly what we're talking about. What we're talking about is after you've done that, you ask the computer, hey, what are they talking about in paragraph uh, 11 2 H? And the machine would say, oh, well, this is all about natural language, you know. This, da, 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 da. So we're talking about actually being able to read the language and understand what it says. For example, I would give it a scan a set of instructions then the machine would now know how to do something as an example okay dragon naturally speaking that so software has been around for a million years um there was a, a version of voice recognition okay go away oh come on cut it out um this this stuff has been out for quite some time. There was a version of this that was available on the Apple II, okay? So voice recognition is not new, 
Now what is new is the machines are getting better and better and better. I will tell you that I've used it to see how, you know, just to play with it, see how it works. And, you know, it's probably about 99% accurate when, when doing dictation, okay? And you might think, well, that's pretty doggone good. 99? No, no, it's not. Let me tell you. Um, if you do voice recognition for like a Word document, 99% uh, means you're going to have like two errors on a page. You're going to have to go through and, you know, run spell check. And you got to read every single word because you just can't trust it. So 99 isn't good enough. That's the point. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's continue. <clears throat> the next thing they talk about is learning systems. So learning systems are all about... <coughs> excuse me. Learning systems are all about um, just how computers could learn. Now, let's pretend like you're training, trying to train a dog or a cat or a parrot, whatever. Okay, you're trying to train a new trick for your dog. And so you have some sort of reinforcement system and you have some sort of feedback. You know, every time the dog does it right, they get a treat. And uh, maybe it's associated with the sound. And so you, you have a little clicker and you click and that tells the dog, okay, I'm supposed to go do something. And if I do it right, I get a treat. So this kind of reward and feedback system is all what this is about. It's the exact same scenario as training a dog is you have some sort of le reinforcement training going on in the computer and the com computer gets told yes you did it correct or no you didn't and it learns from its mistakes and goes well i'm not going to do that again i'm going to do this again instead and trust me i wish my computer had some of this because it does some crazy shit sometimes okay so the computer makes a decision analyzes the result and then tries to make a better decision based upon the result it's called dynamic programming, meaning that it's not going to use the same technique to solve the problem every single time. It's going to say, no, wait a minute. Last time I tried this, that didn't work. So I'm going to alter my technique and use slightly different technique this time. So learning systems. A lot of people use learning systems um, to like play a game of tic-tac-toe or something like that. You know, some, you teach the machine how to do or play chess. And so you teach the machine how to do this and it gets better and better and better and better and better. Okay. Um, let's continue. The next thing you talk about is neural networks. Now neural networks um, it used to mean something slightly different. Uh, it used to mean a group of computers that were you know, typically massively paralleled computers that are designed to mimic the way the brain works. That's, that's a, still probably a classic definition. That's not really what how the term is being used now. Neural network now typically means like pattern recognition. And I don't necessarily mean visual pattern recognition, but that would work. So let's say you're trying to break some encryption code. Okay, so the, the bad guys have encrypted some, some piece of text and you have a copy of this encrypted text and so you turn on neural networking to try to find patterns in the in the code and go, oh, okay, and it'll discover patterns and then say, okay, now perhaps this is the reason why, blah, 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 blah. So it's really all about the way the human kind of thinks, and but most specifically, it's pattern recognition. Okay, you can buy software or get software that can do these kinds of things. It's kind of cool. Um... <clears throat> The next thing we want to talk about is genetic algorithm. Now, this is interesting. <clears throat> Let me tell you uh, an example that I saw. Um, I'll start up this example. This is a, a, a TED talk. If, you ever, if you've never been to TED. So this is uh, Tim. Uh, damn, go away. <sighs> okay. This is Tim Hartford, and the title of this thing is Trial, error, and the God complex. Let me explain that right off the bat because it sounds like it's a religious kind of a conversation and it's not. What he's basically saying is some people fall in this trap and when they come across a problem that the, the solution is to go to an expert to get it solved. And so he's given an example of making laundry detergent. And so he's got a tub of liquid laundry detergent and he sprays it into this tank and it creates flakes and that's what they sell they sell the flakes of laundry detergent so they go to an expert and say build me a nozzle that does this really well 
and the experts say, well, here's how you do it. It didn't work with a flip. So instead, what they did is they went in and said, well, let's just tweak this. Let's just add this and take this away and over and over and over, trial and error, or trial and error, just like real genetics work in real life. Now, I'm going to show you just a, a few seconds of this. Um, I'm starting up at about the nine minute mark. Well, it's not showing. The video is stuck, so I tell you what, I'm not going to show you that. But it's a really cool, a really cool kind of demo, and I really wish you'd go there. Just go to Tim Hartford and start at about the nine minute. I'll go ahead and tell you what it says. So what it says is, yeah, you know, they just randomly make changes to this nozzle and see what it does. You know, they'll add an, an item to the nozzle here, take something away from the nozzle here. They just do it over and over and over, and they end up with a dang good nozzle at the very end. And the idea is that sometimes solutions are so complex that going to an expert is not going to help. The expert is just going to be, well, here's the, the correct answer, and you're going to say, well, okay, I guess this is as good as it's going to get. And reality is you probably need to just trial and error until you get there. So genetic algorithm, kind of cool. And please do go look at that video because it's actually pretty doggone cool. All right. The next one talks about um, intelligent agents. And that sounds kind of weird. Um, intelligent agents are, are bots. Uh, bots are these little software packages that, that run around and do things for you. Uh, in the old days, a bot used to be um, how companies would scan web pages. For example, I'm, I'm, I'm Google and I want to have some sort of a page ranking system so when people type in you know, kumquats, it gives them a very good list of, of sites talking about kumquats. So I create a little robot, so to speak, uh, an intelligent agent that all it does is just go through the internet and searching every single web page it comes across hunting for the word kumquat. Okay, that's kind of what it does. The other example is like non-playing characters, you know, NPCs. So you're you're playing a game and you run across a character in the game, but the character is not. There's no human on the other end. It's just a non-playable character that's in the game. That would be an intelligent agent. It, it, they can do things. They can interact with you. They can you know pick up stuff or attack you or whatever the scenario is. So some sort of an intelligent bot. That's what that's all about. Okay. A little bit more serious note, now we're back to expert systems. Okay, so expert systems are really talking about how to get an inexperienced person up to speed rather quickly. That's what an expert system is all about. Okay, um, if I was to, um, let's just talk about some of the examples, because some of the examples are pretty doggone comp good. There's a company out there called Landtech, and they're their metal fabrication company originally. And then they went into just selling the, the, the robotic uh, software and hardware pieces to allow you to, to cut metal most efficiently. So I've got, or how about the example of leather? I saw this on one of the Goofy TV shows. I've got a, a chunk of cowhide I've plunked out, and I want to cut out a bunch of uh, soles of a shoe. Well, if I did it, I would just kind of line them up, you know, cutting it. When I got to the end, I would just throw the scraps away. But the computer can scan this irregular shape of this cowhide and figure out how to turn this one this way and turn that one this way like a jigsaw puzzle. And they can probably get 12 soles out of that one sheet of cowhide rather than me doing it by eyeball alone could get 10 out of that same sheet of leather. So these expert systems, and sometimes they're not, in the example I just gave you, this expert system, I'm not asking the machine the question. I'm just telling the machine to perform this task that I probably could not do as well. I mean, if, perhaps if you were a very, very good, you've been doing this for a long time, you could probably lay out the dies for cutting the soles just as good as the computer could. But that's what we're all about here, talking about expert systems. Hey, we're getting pretty doggone close to the 15-minute mark, so we'll just pause right here.